Uh, I was working public service, which meant I did the Alabama weather summary and wrote statements and special weather statements and so forth. And we started emphasizing the severity of the <coughs> expected events on April 3rd. We highlighted it in the Alabama weather summary, which went out to the Associated Press and United Press International at that time, plus all the radio and TV stations and newspapers. And the only uh, radar picture we actually got at that time was a paper facsimile of the radar scope with uh, notes made onto the scope and made on to the facts by the operators at Centerville. And of course, we had a continuous open line with them and we conversed almost continuously during severe weather. The Guin tornado first appeared as a severe thunderstorm over in eastern Mississippi. We later issued a tornado warning based on that thunderstorm, I believe for northern Lamar County. And as the thunderstorm continued northeast, it never weakened a bit and it even grew stronger so when it got into uh, approaching Marion County it looked like it was a powerful tornado. My dad thought he heard a tornado coming so I ran to put my tip to the rack. When I reached my bedroom I thought if a tornado comes I can record it. So I ran and put my tape player in the window the microphone and uh, laying across the window, which was open. I made sure the batteries were working and ran to the basement. The most dramatic report we got was an Alabama State Trooper unit that uh, finally got a radio call in from Guin and he said virtually the entire town is gone. I didn't have to have a flashlight because there was so much illumination and you could you, you, you could see real good, but you couldn't, it was so many trees, you just had to climb over, under, whatever you had to do to get out. We knew from the state trooper report that virtually the whole town was destroyed and meant there had to be numerous fatalities, and as it turned out, that way it was. This second house down here was a fire. They said this is all going to burn. Seeing my mother here standing there, and she had blood. One man had a tuba tube stuck to his neck. We had uh, four people dead within oh, 150 feet of our house. She screamed whenever I touched her, so I didn't, I couldn't do nothing far. And people hollered help everywhere, and I said, Lord, what are we going to do? Uh, we can't help these people. Several of us congregated together and started walking down the street. Some of us were barefooted. And you feel for the people, and you know that people are dying or being injured, and it just gives you a funny feeling. You never get used to it. But we had to keep our cool and not get uh, upset and, and keep rolling all night. It was flat. There was nothing in this area. We could see where uh, several homes in a row were not only destroyed, but were so completely swept away that only the front doorstep, concrete front doorstep would remain there. Even the, even the foundations were dislodged and in some cases swept away. I was able to get inside this home and I walked through every room and there were just piles of debris in every room. Normally, the bathroom near the center of a home like this would be the safest place to go. I went into that bathroom, there were no windows in there, but the bathroom was just full of debris, uh, cinder blocks and bricks and timbers and even the bathtub where sometimes you can normally get down in it and pull quilts or blankets or pillows over you uh, is a relative means of safety, but even that was full of debris. You can see where they, where they went and built the storm cellar and see the concrete slab on top to cover it up and then it flanges up for the door and 13 people uh, approximately were in that storm cellar that night and were not injured.
they gathered around here like uh, most people did because there was very few storm cellars in this uh, area or even in Ewan. So uh, they came, they tried to get some people to come in and they would not come in. And uh, five, uh, three of them died. The whole family of the Browns died. So uh, I still say, Go to a storm cellar when it gets threatening weather. But that storm cellar say 14 lives. At least 14. James's street was total destruction. We came up uh, the next couple of days afterwards. We photographed by air the first day and then came up uh, the second day and did a walk through storm survey. This entire street was almost totally destroyed. Over here to our left is the storm cellar where at least uh, Eight or nine or 12 people were inside the storm cell and were saved, but some families around them were killed. And you recognized that right off the bat, didn't you? You, you remember it. Absolutely. I uh, photographed the storm cell a couple of days after the storm, and it was filled pile, uh, still piled full of debris on this whole street. In fact, so many homes were destroyed, the debris was piled up against these woods over here that just looked like a, a garbage dump almost. And even around the storm cellar, the debris was piled high. There were bathtubs that were ripped out of other homes that were lying around and it looked like just a just a lumber yard it was just completely total destruction yet only uh, three-fourths of a block up this way including that white house hardly damaged at all because the tornado path when it came through here it was an F5 tornado but the path was so well defined that you could go from total destruction to no destruction in about half a block so this is where your life was saved on April 3rd 1974. This is the place we came and went in the night of the tornado and saved several lives I'm sure of all the destruction was around here anybody that was left alive would be lucky there's a reasonable chance all of these people would have died if they would have stayed up a here. reasonable chance they was I believe there was 23 or 28 I want to think maybe 28 in this storm cellar so you got over 20 people in here uh-huh yeah and, and how long were you in there oh it didn't last but just a few minutes. Nobody could say much. Like I said, it almost sucked the air out. And they seen it was gonna get that door, so those men grabbed that door to keep it from flying over and pulling us out of there. When the tornado came through here, it was not only believed to be the most powerful tornado ever to strike in Alabama up until that time, and may still be. And the unusual thing about this tornado, the parent thunderstorm had built up to heights of around 66,000 feet. All of the storms at night were very fast movers. Now in Alabama, an average tornado will move forward at about 25 or 30 miles an hour. This one was doing 65 to 70. Jasper got hit hard by a tornado approximately one hour earlier than Guin, and it roared right through the heart of downtown Jasper and uh, heavily damaged the Walker County Courthouse. In fact, it has been estimated that if that tornado had struck during the daytime when the, all the workers and personnel that worked in the county courthouse were on duty, that there would have been numerous fatalities, but as it was, it struck after dark. And so the fatalities in Jasper were not that high. There were quite a few injuries. But the county courthouse was gutted. Um, if you had been almost anywhere in that courthouse, you would at least have been injured because flying debris went all the way through the courthouse. All the windows were knocked out, and uh, even furniture was blown around inside. The fire station that was totally destroyed was uh, just a few yards away from this culvert. The firemen knew the tornado was coming, and they left the fire station and ran and got in this culvert, got as far up in the culvert as it could. Of course, it went all the way through to the next side, but they got in the middle of it away from where there'd be so much flying debris, and they came out uninjured. Much of that credit, of course, is due to the radar operators, Dale Black and his crew down at Centerville Radar, because they uh, got on the hotline with us frequently. and and I said a warning needs, needs to be issued for this one, and so we issued warnings all night. 